Hi, welcome to our Google Plus Hangout from the yeah. LA Times. I'm Michelle yeah. Malte, and I am joined yeah. today by <laughs> Salvador Rodriguez. You've got a little whooping in the background. <laughs> yeah, someone's sneezing over here. <laughs> oh, sneezing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, as you may know, there is some news out of Google today. Uh, Google has released a new Nexus 7 a new iteration of Jelly Bean, and I think what Sal is probably most excited about, Chromecast. Tell yeah, us a little Chrome, bit about so, what's up. Well, Chromecast, you know, they stuck it at the end of the presentation, and it, it seems like, you know, there was good reason for it. This was something that no one had really talked about beforehand. It's one of the rare few times in the last couple of years where a company actually keeps the product secret until it comes out. But Chromecast is kind of like an Apple TV. It's the size of a like a small jump drive, and you stick it into the HDMI input of your TV if your TV is kind of new and has that. Um, from there, you just plug it into the wall, connect it to your Wi-Fi, and you can basically use that to stream content from the cloud. So how you get it to work, basically, is you just find a video on your smartphone or your tablet, uh, by, by going either to YouTube or Netflix and just uh, choosing it, clicking a cast icon, and then from there you can start watching on your TV. So it's that's a feature that's kind of already exists with Apple if you have just all Apple devices. It's called AirPlay with the Apple TV. Um, and it works basically the same, but the big benefit with Chromecast is that it costs just $35. So... That's and Apple TV like is that. significantly more. Well, Apple TV is almost three times as much. It's $99. Now, I, I wanted to <laughs> let our viewers know that we're trying out a new feature here on this Hangout on Air. You can actually talk to us. You can ask questions. You can vote questions up. You've got to go to our Google Plus page, google.com slash plus LA Times. We want to hear from you, so go ahead and post questions there and comments and we'll, we'll get to them. But Sal, you know, one of the things that one of, one of my friends on Facebook said was this could be a an Apple TV killer. I think they said winning. So is this kind of, uh, to borrow the Charlie Sheen lingo, is this an infusion of tiger blood for Google? Is this <laughs> likely to knock Apple TV out? Um, well, not quite yet, but the potential is very much there. Um, I mean, the biggest drawback with Chromecast right now is the fact that there's only um, Netflix and nobody else after that that's really signed up. Pandora is coming, but it's not here on arrival yet. And uh, that matters because Chromecast goes on sale today online. And it'll be in stores pretty soon as well. Um, but Google says there's they're opening up an SDK preview, which, you know, means that eventually it will be an SDK and that means that app developers can add cast the, the whole cast functionality to their apps so potentially you could see Amazon add it to Amazon Instant Video, HBO add it to HBO Go and you know as well as Hulu Plus and lots of other um, you know apps that you like to use and, and from if, if that happens if Google can get the developers to adopt this then it very much will be a rival to the Apple TV as well as Roku on Twitter, I got a question from user at BH Jesse, and he, he kind of asked me that sort of thing, you know, because when I promoted this thing on Facebook and Google, I said, you know, the $35 Apple TV killer. He's asking, is it really a rival to the Apple TV or just the AirPlay feature? And for now, it is just that, that AirPlay feature, but if you get developers to all add cast to their apps, then you don't need the AirPlay, or you don't need the Apple TV, you just need the AirPlay feature. But let's, let's talk about that AirPlay feature. I mean, for, for those of us who have Apple TV and, and use it, it's only for use with iOS devices or, or with uh, a Mac computer, an OS, 7, uh, OS 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. You can't stream to an Android device, and Chromecast is allowing you to stream to what? To well, Android devices and iOS devices? Yeah, Google's bringing in that, you know, basically philosophy that they've always had, which is keeping lots of things, or keeping everything open, essentially, right? So they want you to be able to use Chromecast with all sorts of devices. So that means that if you have an iPhone, you can stream that to the Chromecast, or if you have a Nexus 7, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Android or Apple, they're going to open it to all, uh, and so that, that should work, that should work um, maybe even as soon as now with the, the YouTube app or the Netflix app on on iOS. 
um, and so they just want it to be open. The other thing about Chromecast, though, is that it's not, it's actually not just um, a device. Well, it's kind of complicated. Chromecast is the device that we saw today. Right. But it seems that Google wants to use this whole cast technology and partner with others. So you might see in the future TVs by Samsung or LG that come out with the cast technology enabled. So that means that you won't even need any hardware. It'll be within your TV, and then you can very easily stream things from your devices onto the TV in a platform that's adopted, hopefully, by a lot of uh, companies. You know, just just back to the the streaming from uh, devices to your big screen TV, with Apple TV mirroring, uh, it means that you can only use your device for what is being played on on the TV. I've read some early reports from people who've had hands on that you're actually able to use your device for other activities while doing the the streaming, which, if true, is 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 quite. Uh, a flexibility that you may want to use. Um, those of us who like to multitask, we'll have to hear from Jessica Gwynn, a reporter who's who's there and has her hands on the devices right now. So, so Sal, yeah. let's let's also talk about um, the Nexus Seven. Mm -hmm. What's so, new besides so, the price? Yeah, well, the price went up, so there are some improvements, but you're gonna definitely have to pay for them. Unlike the original version of the Nexus 7, which started at $200, the new Nexus 7, as I've been calling it, kicks off at $229. And what you're getting here is a really cool design that Jay-Z would approve of. It's black on black. Um, it's also much smaller, which, you know, Google said is for the sake of making it more portable and, you know, just lighter and easier to carry. Um, so it's, it's thinner than before. It's also more narrow. Um, and... They've also improved the screen, so you're not getting just 720p HD now. You're getting a full 1920 by 1200 1080p HD resolution. So that basically right. means it's going to be a very, very clear image. Um, they've also added a back-facing camera, which was one of the biggest things missing, which you know you could find on the on the iPad Mini, but not on on the old Nexus 7. And now there's also uh, dual stereo speakers, which was something we saw on Amazon's Kindle Fire Tablet HD, which came out last year, but we didn't see that on, on the Nexus 7. So Nexus 7 played catch-up, and it also added a cool a few cool new features. Um, and it's going to be available for 229 for a 16-gigabyte model, 269 for a 32-gigabyte model, and then later on uh, it will be available for like 349 for a 32-gigabyte model that can connect to 4G LTE through AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. So... Some some few incremental um, improvements. It's also a bit faster too. It's got a faster <laughs> chip, right? And and another gig of RAM. Yeah, you know that's how it always goes with technology. They always get faster with the next version. So so gaming might be a little bit smoother on <coughs> on the device. Yeah, um, you know Google talked a lot about that today. It seems like they're definitely you know trying to take on you know the Nintendo 3D Wii's or whatever of the world or 3 dss excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And yeah, you know, they, they want to cater to that audience. When I was trying out all the small devices that came out last year, the Nexus 7 was really great because, you know, it's built like the back had like a the back has like a rubbery cover, so it was very easy to hold, very light, and it looks like, you know, Google just wants to keep building on that. Um, it seems like Google's really, you know, going into the gaming world, like it's an interest of theirs. It doesn't sound like it's it's revolutionary. It sounds more evolutionary, like an incremental shift. So if you have a Nexus 7 from last year, is this, you know, should you throw up your hands and, and get this new one? Uh, I mean, probably not. You might want to check, you know, what people might offer you for it on Craigslist or some other websites. You might get a good deal. But, you know, this is probably just, this is good if, if you haven't bought one yet. If, if you have, you know, just wait for it. Wait for the next one. You know, there's not too much here that you just have to get. Um, so yeah, it's, it's alright if you wait. Well, uh, another incremental upgrade, if you will, has was Jelly Bean. Nothing altogether uh, exceptional, I, as far as I noted. What, what's your take? Well, you know, they're calling it Android 4.3 Jelly Bean. This is the third version of Android that they call Jelly Bean, which just kind of shows you that there hasn't been anything too big that they've added to it. Um, so, you know, 
there, of course, there's going to be like lots of new stuff in there for developers, which means if you're a consumer, you really don't care. But ultimately, it will be good for you. But the biggest thing, which was a feature that you seemed to like, was a restrictive or restrictive or restricted one of those two profiles. So that that uh just kind of limits what other people can see. Um, do you? Well, yeah, in, in 4.2, there, there were multi-user profiles, but 4.3 is offering restricted, multi-user restricted profiles. And for those of us who are parents who, yes, hand our, our tablets over to our kids, this is actually something that's intriguing. So you can limit the in-app purchases. You can limit um, what they see, what they can access in ways that you couldn't before. And, and so... I know I'm intrigued. I'd like to see a little bit more. Uh, certainly as an iPad owner, this is one of my greatest frustrations that you don't have these things. Um, so it, it, it's intriguing to me. Definitely, definitely. And if um, the Nexus 7, which comes out, the Wi-Fi versions come out on July 30th, I believe. Um, those will come with Android 4.3 already installed. But if you have a Nexus device already, meaning you have the old Nexus 7, you have the Nexus 10 uh, tablet, or you have the Nexus 4 or Galaxy Nexus smartphones, then you should receive the ability to upgrade to Android 4.3 later today. And you can, uh, you can check that out as well. Well, we also have a Nexus 7 in our household, so we'll be upgrading, and I'll give you an update, Sal, on, uh, on what we think of that. Yeah, maybe, you know, you can... Tell us what you think about restricted profiles. Maybe it's a feature that everyone should try, especially parents. Absolutely. Well, you can get a full roundup of all things new and uh, our, our reporter Jessica Gwynn's updates as well on latimes.com slash tech. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sal. And uh, you can join us a little bit later today as we unbox uh, the Lumia 1020. So check us out. There it is. There's the box. There's, There's the, the box. Teaser. <laughs> so <laughs> look on latimes.com/tech for more, and we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us.